<laughs> what is that? So it has begun. I have started work on demolishing this center area. Uh, I've already got my storage sort of moved down here. So I'm now starting to just sort of get this tore down so that way I can actually start to build where the, the main place where our storage is actually going to reside and what is essentially going to be my living quarters. Now that I've got all of this cleared out, I am slowly but surely working on getting sort of a foundation placed in so I can move my storage back into this location and get it out of these that are here. Uh, like an idea that I have is to have a bridge that potentially links into these and uh, the bridge will then go over here and I'll have access to this top section which I can put even more machines in. Now this place is slowly but surely starting to come together. And uh, yes, I'm gonna be using ladders to get up here. And I have maxed out my ladder skill, uh, the king of the ladders. So now I can go up here very, very fast just by jumping and bam, we are up on the ladders. So my goal is to sort of have our storage uh, run through the middle of this um, and also have access underground. So I do want this to lead to an underground area, which I think would be kind of cool. And so if I open this up a little bit right here, I could potentially make this like glass and uh, it would give me a place to set up things underground as well. So I've had an idea. How about I use an elevator down the center of this? And this is actually my first time ever using the create elevators. So yes, this will be kind of an experiment on my part, but I think all I need is some redstone contacts, an elevator pulley itself, and then one contraption control. And this allows you to select your floor. The redstone contacts are where you define where your floor is at. And this, the, the uh, elevator pulley is how you actually assemble your actual elevator and where you give it rotational power to be able to go up and down. Now, I think the hardest part about the elevator is probably coming up with a design for it. And since we're going for a steampunk build, well, I kind of want to make this steampunky if I can do that. Now, for the most part, I'm kind of liking this design. It's it's really hard to kind of make this look really good with like having functional doors and stuff like that. So uh, I have these doors right here and I really want them to open up, but I also have this like little space to work with. So this is what I've done. I have some chains, I have some girders, and then I'm also using the andesite scaffolding in this whole project. Now, the main way that this functions is you have two redstone contacts. So I have a redstone contact that it's going to land on, and this is what's going to be deemed as our first floor, right? Or our main floor, or however we configure these. Now, as soon as I make this a full contraption, that will then change the way these contacts actually look. And right now, these are just performing their duties. They're just emitting a redstone signal when they're touching. Now, uh, the contraption controls is what determines what level we're going to go on. And because I want this to be a four-way door, um, I have a hard time placing this <laughs> in certain locations. So I think I'm just going to have it in the floor right here. Um, and I might actually have this facing the north. So we'll just have it facing the north right here on the opposite side of our redstone contacts. That, that should work. Just so long as it's a part of the contraption, we should be able to do this. Now, I want to go ahead now and start to set this up. And I'm going to run into my first little problem here once we get up here. Uh, once I place down the elevator pulley, we have to get this power. Um, so I've, I have to somehow uh, get some rotational force up here from our current setups that are down here. So for this, I kind of have an idea. I'm going to go ahead and chop the wood down right here. And I'm going to run the line all the way from underground to this. So I'm going to directly connect and this is going to go a couple of blocks underground and we should be able to tap right into our current system. So I will simply disconnect this, add ourselves a chain drive, and then I'm going to run some shafts all the way up here. Now this should be perfect. I should be able to just connect this into a rotational speed controller and then I can drag this straight onto this. Um, so this should be exactly what we need. Let's see, is it going the wrong way? I guess the direction really doesn't matter, does it, at this current point? 
Um, so I do need to glue this whole thing together. Uh, so I will need some glue and that is how the contraption is going to take form. We have to glue everything that is glueable together at the moment. And I guess we right click on this and that's how it's going to lock this whole thing together. And I've just ran into my first unfortunate issue. And that is that these chains apparently cannot be used inside of a contraption. Oh, how unfortunate. I've got to find some other block then for these. And so I've decided to go ahead and go with these shafts. And that looks like it's going to work out just fine. So now with everything glued, we should have all of this now ready to go in place. Yes, it looks like everything's going to get glued together. We're supposed to be able to right click this. Okay. And then it is now connected to this contraption here. And then this elevator contact has now changed the way it looks. Um, so now it will light up red like that on the contact, which is kind of cool. Um, so what else do we have to do? Well, I'm assuming we have to set another location for a redstone contact. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab another redstone contact. And I'm going to put one right here. So if we have one right here, we should be able to go down to this floor. At least so I hope. Um, so we can, yeah, we can label the floors. Um, so this is floor one or floor, actually, this would be floor two. Um, and then how do we control this? So it says anchors are off. Uh oh, target component. Oh, uh, click to switch items. That is not what we want. Hmm. Ah, out of all the things, I forgot to glue my contraption controls to the contraption. So that's kind of important, right? Um, so now that should be different. So now this actually has some control. And so that is converted. Now the, the spot down here, however, uh, this is not auto converted. And I'm wondering, do I have to like lower this down or how this actually functions? I'm trying to figure that out. Ah, I see. So the reason why this hasn't converted is because this actually needs to be on the exact same level as the one above. Ah, and there it goes. Now it converts. Um, so we can call this like main floor. And we can call the, we can uh, set the number, I think, here to zero. And we'll set that. And then this one could be floor one. And we can say floor one. And so now when we go here, we can scroll down and we can actually see the levels. Um, and so I should be able to hit main. Oh, and that's so cool. And now we are slowly rolling down to the main floor. And I can speed this up, by the way, and make this go a bit faster as needed. But just like that, <laughs> we now have ourselves a functioning elevator. Oh, that is just so cool. This is too neat. So now that I have that elevator, it's now time to start finishing up the roadways. And then I have some plans to go on a little bit of an adventure. Now we are about to go on an adventure. Yes, but this is going to be a little bit more dangerous as this is going to involve pillagers. Just judging by the map, this is a pillager fortress map. And this is going to require probably some heavy ammunition. So... What is a way that we can actually improve the amount of ammo we store? Well, first of all, we've put our ammo into a backpack and that's made it a little bit nicer, but I did read some suggestions from you guys in the comments and thank you guys so much, by the way, for commenting. Um, and you guys had suggested we use a, uh, let's see, backpack, use a auto refill upgrade. So it keeps refilling stacks of the selected items from the player's inventory. And this would be actually fantastic. So let's make that. Uh, it does require an ender pearl. So I did go ahead and have that in ender pearl ready. Um, and then we just need to turn it into an advanced one. Typically, I like to just turn these into advanced. And so there we go. So now we have ourselves a refill and we can put this in our bag here. And then I like to just, yeah, you just tell it what you want it to refill um, and tell it what slot apparently. So does this matter? It says any slot. Um, and it doesn't matter in our case, we can have it refill any slot, but it says scroll to change the target. So we can say offhand hot bar. I kind of like the idea of, oh, you can, you can define exactly where you want it. Okay. We want it to n probably not be in our hot bar, uh, any slot. I, I like the idea of any slot, but I, I wish there's an option to have it be not in the hot bar. 
So that would be kind of nice. Um, okay, so offhand, or there's hot bar slot one, two, three, four, which would be all of these slots, by the way. Um, yeah, I'll just say any slot, because that's that's all we have to worry about, right? Is making sure we have at least that in there. And so now, if we shoot, we refill, and notice this stays at 64, because this will always keep a stack in here. So we can now fill this entire backpack up, um, and we can use this as a bullet bag. So I think at this point, it is now time to test our skills and go after this pillager fortress and see if we can't potentially take it on. So it looks like Southwest is where we're headed. We've got to find this location, and I think I have everything ready to hopefully take this place on. Ooh, I definitely need to stop at these locations right here because if I plan on making the iron spells like uh, Forge, we are going to need some crying obsidian. So definitely want to stop in here and grab a few things. Oh boy, there are things we're gonna have to fight potentially, but yes, I should definitely grab this right here. And there we go. <laughs> Who is cutting onions? Uh, not me, not me, I didn't do it. Now, I will say the hardest part about this pack and exploring is just waiting on things. Ooh, what is that? Waiting on things to sort of pop into existence. The chunk loading is very, very slow. Now, this place is pretty cool looking. Uh, and this is on my way. I still haven't even budged that dot on this map. So this map is, is very, very far out. I've got to see what this is all about, though. There's a regular skeleton. The sword just one-shots these mobs. It's kind of amazing. Ooh, the Tinkerer's Workshop. Okay, there's a sword on the ground. And we're gonna have, it looks like very similar loot to several of the other buildings that I've explored. But, this looks like it's kind of filled with create stuff that I will take. And there's a key. What is this key gonna be for? So this is from supplementaries. So is there a safe in here that is locked by a key? Because that's what that key is typically for. This would be more exciting if we didn't already have all of this stuff, but like there's a mechanical press. By the way, I did make a diamond backpack just for storing things like these. And there we go. We are now storing away. Oh my God. What is that? The thing is horrifying looking. I don't know what that was, but it had a tongue sticking out and just came out of nowhere. Now that right there is a lot of cogs and there's also a rope pulley. Um, I'm assuming the rope pulley, I mean, this is hooked up. If we give this a crank, is that pulling that up here? That is definitely pulling this up. <laughs> so yeah, this is something that this can do. Uh, the rope pulley can connect just like our elevator. However, this rope pulley here, yeah, this rope pulley is a little bit different, but there it is. It is now connected and it uh, drops the block whenever you uh, you stop activating it. I mean, at least there's some like really nice starter areas. Like if you wanted to like jump into this and you didn't want to build anything, like this is already pre-built. There's a lot of stuff just ready to go. So after heading back and dropping off my stuff, I decided, yeah, that's gonna be way further out than I have the ability to get to, uh, simply because it just takes too long for the chunks to load. Now, I do wanna head over here on the map, and this is where I did see another pillager outpost thing. And I have a feeling that we should be able to take it on now that we're a little bit more equipped than we were last time. This will also be a nice test of our ability. Yeah, now this place doesn't seem too bad. All right, so we will have to take out some runners. Um, I'm gonna park my copter over here. And yes, we are gonna have to take wow. these guys out. Thankfully, we just basically one shot them. Okay, what is this guy all about? Oh, this guy charges. There's another runner. That guy has a, was that a TNT in his hand? Oh no. Okay, so yeah, we, we basically are one-shotting most of these guys, which is kind of awesome. But also kind of scary at the same time. Like, is this guy just gonna run up and... Oh my gosh, he drops dynamite. <laughs> what is constantly hitting me? What is that? Oh, he was invisible. So these are the Marauders? Marauder, interesting. That's oh, just a worker. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, you, you're not even a part of this. All right, so I'm gonna make my way in here and hope 
There we go. Get rid of this guy, which is absolutely awful. This guy. Ah, there are spawners. I'm gonna try and take those. At least knock them out of this one, even though that probably would have been a nice spawner to have. I don't know if that was a witch spawner. I probably should have looked at that first. Okay, let's go up here. Let's make sure all spawners are being cleared out. What is this? This is a pillager spawner. I don't think that that's going to bother me too much. This one, on the other hand, this is a pig spawner? This is definitely spawning those things. And what are you? You are a pill another pillager spawner. As long as we keep at least like one pillager spawner, maybe we'll be okay. Okay, and this is a vindicator spawner, actually. I want to leave that one too. Okay. Whew. Thankfully, we got those guys cleared out pretty quick. Oh, okay. Oh, and there's some good stuff. Progliger and friends. Oh, is that what this is? This is the Progliger. Okay, that's exactly what this seems like. So far, it seems like this has been a pretty good, pretty good loot. Pretty good haul. I'll also take these cauldrons. Let's see. Let's see what's further downstairs that I completely missed out on. So yeah, I should have cleared out this. It just, however, we are just taking everything, which I'm kind of blown away by. So this was a really nice test. This was a really nice test. Okay, so more stuff. Emeralds. Ooh, we got some, uh, some Eyes of Ender. That's pretty nice. So now that I'm back at the base, I just got a mending book. There's all kinds of stuff from here. This hypnotizes certain mobs seems kind of interesting. So with that out of the way, I think we should go and try to explore something much bigger. So I'm thinking we tackle this pyramid that is over here that we've seen a few episodes ago. And there's also this pyramid here, or at least get an idea of what the pyramid is all about. Um, so I am going to take my copter out there and we are going to see what this thing is all about and here we are this place is massive looking um and i'm hoping that this is uh it holds that uh that pyramid loot and i have no idea what to expect from this so let's pop in here oh we get mining fatigue oh we just got given mining fatigue i do have to pop this open let's get some torches placed in here so I'm wondering if this is an indication to something. We have one blank, two, blank, two. Hmm. Okay, interesting. We are given a bow here. Now that makes sense. And some arrows. And this, like, resets whatever this is. So maybe we have to match this up. If so, that's pretty cool. And that doesn't seem to do anything. Unless we're supposed to activate that and then trigger it. Okay, we're not triggering that. We can hit it differently. Okay, that's not working. Um, maybe my problem solving skills are a little lackluster here. Let's see, what does this do? Ooh, this actually changes the pattern. Interesting. How am I supposed to solve this and what am I supposed to be solving? Okay, I just heard pistons go. I I just been stepping on these randomly. But I did just hear a piston, and I have no idea what that did. <laughs> it's just randomly stepping on them. But I did hear a piston go off, so I have, I have an idea that maybe it opens something that we need, and I'm hoping that's the case. So oh, interesting, this sort of puzzle right here, when I step on these, it seems like it opens up these target blocks. <laughs> and they start going crazy. So that one I just got. That one. And that one. I've got to get them all. I did just get them all. So those were all lit. Interesting. So I have a feeling this one is all about timing. Like I need to trigger this right as it's perfect. <laughs> Oh man, this one's this one might be a bit challenging. It seems like I, I probably have to land this like just perfect. Possibly for this to work. 
Oh man, I don't know. So interesting. I wonder if I have to like be standing on a very specific pressure plate in order to do this. Like I can't see this one. Huh. Uh, also, I, I realize I can definitely use my gun for this, which is way more efficient. That didn't do anything, apparently. Maybe we stand on the middle one? And nothing. I'm just going to keep trying all of the different pressure plates <laughs> until something happens. I'm slowly beginning to think these pyramids are completely scuffed. <laughs> like there's something, something not right. Uh, it doesn't make anything very, very clear. Um, I, I've gotten all the lights to be lit up. And that's my best assumption. Um, that's all I have going for me right now is trying to assume how some of these uh, different projects are supposed to go. I'm assuming we're supposed to be able to get down here. We have mining fatigue, so we can't actually break through this. This caused a piston to move. This I have heard nothing piston related happening. Like no matter what I do or stand, that doesn't work. And no matter how I trigger this, like nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing at all. So I decided to head back home and I have a little bit of an idea. So I'm thinking what I can do is I can build myself a cart contraption uh, and we might be able to bypass all of that sort of janky protection that's going on there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to basically build out a dirt uh, breaker. Uh, if that's what I can call it. That is going to break a area underneath it yeah this will be interesting so now with my dirt breaker 9000 ready to go uh, i just need to glue this thing together and we can assemble a cart and now with everything glued together i should be able to assemble this <laughs> and yes wherever i do place this it will break a hole in the floor so let's go ahead and put this to the test so when we walk back in here we get that mining fatigue right but let's see if we can't get away with this. So I built the block to be a five by five and it is connected right here. So if I put the cart right here and I place this down and then this down, <laughs> yes, it just broke a hole into this area and I can pick this back up as needed and we should be able to pick the whole thing up because the wrench does not care. Oh, and there is TNT. Was this supposed to explode? I have no idea, but I just bypassed that, so I guess I don't have to worry about that anymore. And what do we have here? So gold blocks, we can't break into those really because of the mining fatigue, but create just absolutely <laughs> destroys all of the mining fatigue stuff anyways. All right, so let's see what this is all about. Okay, so there's a door there. This just leads into what appears to be like nothing. Is this another time where we're going to have to use the create? <laughs> Are we going to use this to get through all of these walls? Because it's another thing we can do. We can use it to also bypass, for example, wall protections like this. Um, so if I place this right here and then I place my cart. Yes, now I have a perfect door straight through, of course. Oh, would I not want that? Oh, goodness. This feels so cheaty. But, it, I mean, it is a part of Create, technically. Technically. <laughs> okay. So there is a room back here. Oh, there's where all the, the loot is. Okay. And we got leather. Wow, all of that for just this? Everlasting protection. Ooh, there's a irons. Oh, is this irons? Wait. This, there's two scrolls. We have Burning Dash and we have the Recall scroll. I'll take the Recall. So all of this, like there's definitely some iron spells and spellbook related stuff in here. And I am always down for that. Interesting. Another blank. More spells. Yes, please. I will definitely take the runes too. Okay. We got another ring. That's very interesting. Okay, so... Is there anything else in here that's really good? Curse of Vanishing. 
I mean, so far the loot is kind of, oh, there we go. So this must be more iron spells. I am totally down for that. This is a husk that's getting wrecked. Wait, what did he drop though? Whoa, there's more husks. These are special husks though. They all have like slowness. Eternal slumber. Who did I just kill? I have no idea. There is definitely a spawner in here that is spawning quite a few of these. What are these? They're bot flies. Oh my goodness. I've definitely got to light this up. Oh, there's gold blocks and everything in here. Okay, so this is where, this is the chamber for sure. Yeah, there might be some better loot in here. Who knows? I mean, honestly, this loot is fantastic. Just getting iron spells related stuff. But what what's in here? Okay, that has Slayer. I'll take whatever that book is. There is a zombie skull. And th so that loot wasn't the greatest. Maybe there's something in here? Besides gold blocks? Ah, there is a chest. Oh, there's a heavy chain, which I'd already gotten. A blaze storm scroll. And this has Slayer 5. I'm just going to take all that I can out of here. And this chest has an enchanted golden apple in it. Yes, please. All right. And there is some more rooms over here. This one has gilded blackstone. And I think there's a recipe that we're going to need that uses gilded blackstone. That was trapped. Oh, I'm so glad I wasn't standing right there. Oh, there's even more stuff. Yeah, and I, I totally cheesed whatever operation. I, I have no idea if it was broken or not. Oh, this is kind of cool. What does the lever do? Oh, it's a pool parkour course. Oh, I should be able to get that. Is there a slime spawner down here that's causing these guys to spawn? If so, that's fantastic. A slime spawner would be so nice. Fermented, there's all kinds of potion brewing stuff. I'm going to take all of these, actually. <laughs> oh, man, the loot's fantastic. All right, let's see if I can do this. I got to time it just right. And I made it. Whew, that last one was a big jump. Okay, and there's even more loot over here. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. All of this stuff. That's a poison warding grants immunity. Oh, we just got our first, or our first epic ink. Which is great. And there's a rotten spell book. Which we hadn't found yet. Oh, there's so, oh, so many scrolls. Yes. What is this? Long cast become interruptible? Oh, that is great. That means all of our spell casts with our iron spells. Now we will not get interrupted if we get hit. Which is one of my biggest complaints from using the spell book. So there was a little library area. There's a cake. And it is sitting on top of, a, of an observer, which has me a little worried. Maybe I shouldn't mess with the cake. Uh, we can, we can eat from it, but I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> I don't think I can actually eat from it. Okay, this has me the most worried, is maybe messing with that cake. Oh wait, I just noticed we don't have mining fatigue anymore. Okay, so it's just linked to a splash potion. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, we don't have mining fatigue anymore, which is fantastic. Oh, nice. So whatever we broke in there must have removed the thing that was giving us mining fatigue. Okay, um, now this is a parkour course, it looks like, as well, where you would land on spikes. This should be pretty doable as far as a parkour master like myself should be able to handle. Very nice. And this is a crouching section. And a water section. I move very fast in water. This would normally allow me to refresh my breathing. Oh boy. But it's it's not. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do in there. Unless there is another section that wraps around in this massive puzzle of a dungeon. Ah, the tra there was a trap door right here with the magma block. And this opens into another room. 
got even more goodies in here. I hope more iron spell stuff, because that's the stuff I really enjoy. Oh, and by the way, I didn't notice this down here, but these are all skulls. And I probably want to grab those, because they're actually kind of useful. But I do have to check one more thing in the center of this room. And that is, does this drop down? Oh, of course it does. Of course it does. Yes, so this is like your standard... Your standard Minecraft temple thing. Okay, but this is all, this whole thing is completely filled with the pressure plates. Okay, I, do, I just want to make sure I clear out all of the TNT to make sure that this is all completely cleared. Woo! And then also check this again. Okay, and we're good. Oh, so okay. There's more tattered tomes. This has another thing of haste. This is lightweight, reduces the weapon uh, aim down sight speed. Straddle jump, might as well. Oh my god, fortify scroll, that's actually nice. Another parchment fragment. So I am happy to take all of those things. And an iron one. Ooh, we got another backpack. Is that it though? Oh, come on. Blast protection. Oh, and we got the old eye. I don't think I have this one. Actually, we might have it already. Uh, I don't know. Summon the horse scroll. The horse scroll summon is actually really nice in iron spells. Now, I do want to see this. What kind of crazy redstone is going on here? Okay, so the redstone. So just to check if this is Bork, this is supposed to emit a redstone signal. But I don't remember if it emits a redstone signal directly from the block. So, if I was to do, for example, this... Oh, it does emit a redstone signal now. That's interesting. Very quick. And so, you would have to time this... ...at the beginning? I don't know what this is actually looking for in here. This is a very intricate redstone monstrosity down here and I have no idea what is actually going on but with a little bit of ingenuity we really don't have to solve any of those puzzles as you can just simply break right through the entire structure and we actually have another one of these that we could easily gain access to and now that I know they have iron spells stuff it's definitely worth looting them uh and yes we did already have ourselves an old eye but you know I'm still super happy with just getting all of these scrolls by the way those tattered tomes they are basically experience. Yes. Super handy. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get super lucky and find any of the Ekmatic Legacy things in those chests, but that doesn't mean you won't find them in them. Uh, there should be a, a small chance of you hopefully uncovering some Ekmatic Legacy stuff inside of chests like that. It's just super rare. Very, very low chance. Like below like 3% or even lower than that. And so guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. There was a lot we did today, believe it or not. I've even started working on this bridge that is going to eventually lead out to the other sides. Ah, there's a lot to do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. So be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I really appreciate it. It's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that huge thanks is going to go out to that guy data thank you by the way so much for your amazing support and choosing to support me over on discord becoming a discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible guys i look forward to seeing you whether that's on the discord over on twitch or just here in the youtube comments and i look forward to seeing you in the next one and as always guys thanks for watching bye